and we're back back for the next one all right spidey 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 man um, old war boy was out waiting for this one spider-man spider-man was my guy growing up i mean i wanted to be spidey spidey was it um and after this uh whole legal battle after sony um Sony lost uh, or lost the uh, viewership, and all the email leaks happened. They worked out a deal with Marvel to loan out the character, and so Spidey is now temporarily part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So there's a new take on the character, um, continuing on from the last film that this new Spider-Man rendition. I was in where they had Iron Man as his mentor and so they just uh, continued on from that that was in Captain America Civil War and now that same rendition of Spidey is in this new new film Spider-Man Homecoming because I still don't know why they call it that I, I, he's back home now where he's gonna be in this new world of Spider-Man, whatever. Anyways, um, it's a new rendition. So Andrew Garfield is out. Tom Holland is in. They made Spider-Man a um, a young kid, which is which is uh, good. Like he's younger than um, younger than what we've seen him as. He's uh, he's truly this kid. He's a high school science geek and he's a kid, and that's but that's what Spider-Man was. He was a high school science geek. He was he was in or college, uh, depending on whatever whatever rendition uh, you're watching or reading. But he was a kid, you know. He was he was a school science geek, just you know, one day uh, blessed and cursed with these uh, super human powers. So um, so that's what he is now, uh, and they upgraded him. They upgraded him to uh, to this new day and age. Is it is definitely a 2017 Spider-Man. So Iron Man as his mentor, carrying on from the last film, Captain America. Uh, I liked a lot of the a lot of the new quirks, a lot of the new um, the new uh, happenings that, that they gave him. So. In the last film, we learned that uh, Iron Man, you know, like being the mechanical genius that he is, Tony Stark, um, he he created um, Spider-Man suit. He created the suit, and so in this new Spider-Man, we learn, or we delve more into that, and so um, and so we learn that uh, the Spider-Man suit. Is has Tony Stark written all over it. It's just like the Iron Man suit. It talks to Spider-Man. It helps him out. There's even like some. There's like a lot of gizmos and gadgets on it uh, that reflect, you know, that reflect uh, uh, my childhood. Like a lot of things. Not a lot of things, but uh, there were like a couple of things that you know that that that. Uh, that the little kid in me just kind of flared with joy, like, "Oh my God! I totally had that action figure as a kid, and they and they and they included it in the movie." Ah! <laughs> it was, you know, like there was some of that in this, uh, which I enjoyed. Um, There's a lot of um, potential there. There's a lot of potential to make you just wonder and glee. Like, there's so much they can do with this character. Um, at one point, um, the suit talks to him. It's a woman, you know, and um, and she's like, yeah, you know, you have, you have over, I think, three thousand or four thousand some odd different web shooter combinations. Like, Holy crap, man! Like, I can't wait to see some of that, you know. So, so there's a lot of potential with the film. So, um, so in that, in that aspect, you know, like that, that light, that avenue, this new direction that that they're taking Spider-Man, you know, like giving Spider-Man more to us the fans and it's not more of you know that separation because of business and licensing that is Hollywood you know where this studio they have you know Fox has 
Wolverine, Deadpool, Fantastic Four, and then Sony has Spider-Man, and then Disney, they have like, you know, like a lot of the core, core characters, Iron Man, Hulk, Captain America, Thor. So like in this, this new Spider-Man, it was like, you know, more, more bringing it back home to us fans who love all these characters, who grew up with them all in the same world because they all belong in the same world. So it was like, it was a little nudge at that, <clears throat> which was good to see, you know, which I liked. And I was so, and that, you know, is what made it, made it so eager for me to be to see this. Um, it just sucks that, you know, Sony loaned them out and they're gonna take them back, you know, sometime in the future and just, just kind of, you know, like to build up their own sales um, for when they bounce back on their feet after the email hacks. Anyways, um, that's about that. That's like the core of why why I generally like the film. But overall, um, this film just truly didn't deliver in the way that it could have. It had a lot of potential, but it just failed just to really capture that that little child in me that that 11 year old kid eating cereal on Saturday mornings back when Saturday morning was like the golden era for a kid because that's when all the you know cartoons would come on today you know today we live in the world of instant gratification so Saturday morning please I'm gonna watch it right now but anyways the, that 11 year old kid eating cereal on Saturday mornings would just jump for joy whenever Spider-Man would come on and you know like he would just cheer with wonder and glee and there wasn't like enough of that like there were moments where that part of me would would slightly come out in hopes like oh my god like this is gonna happen like this is happening you know like that that 11 year old is gonna come out and take full form because oh my god this is awesome and that would go away after about five seconds like oh man you guys had it and you just blew it but anyways um yeah, like I wanted, I mean, like I just wanted more, more of that. Um, I was gonna say there was, um, yeah, like there was, uh, the, there, there were like a couple of moments I was gonna, I was gonna cheer, a couple of moments I was gonna, you know, shout, but it went away. You know, like I just wanted more. They, um, they, the, the key thing here is Sony focused heavily on the marketing and they wanted to be sure that they didn't do what Warner Brothers did uh, back in the 90s with Tim Burton's um, Tim Burton's Batman parents were calling the studios upset and frustrated because it wasn't kid friendly enough you know it wasn't family friendly enough or toy friendly which is what which is what uh, Sony and Disney wanted to clearly make sure would not happen now. They wanted to be sure that they could make something very accessible to children and families and sell a lot of merchandise to go along with this film. And the story and the and, and a little bit of the soul and the heart of this film fell to the wayside as a result of that. So they kind of lost their focus and they didn't really they didn't really have that strong like strong film both for kids as well as adults they focused more on making this for for um kids but they marketed it as if it was for everyone like they do with all the other marvel films because that's what that's what i thought at least that this was going to be the next chapter um another step in um like another chapter uh, another step in the in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, in the, in the MCU. Another movie like that, but with this kid Spider-Man character that can be um, very much seen by kids, but it's, but it's also very much for adults, like, just like the other Marvel films. But it wasn't, it was more kitty and not so much adult. It was a, it was a, it was more of a kid film, and had they marketed it as, as such, as a kid film, 
I would have saw it differently. And, you know, like maybe it wouldn't have made as much, but I mean, hey, you know, I would have known what it was and I would have taken it as such. But instead, I saw it as another Marvel universally marketed for everyone, kind of a Delph film, and was let down because it wasn't that. So that was disappointing. I mean, and as a result, the story and, you know, the heart and soul, um, it lost its way. So, um, so like the whole, what it means to be a hero, that classic, uh, life defining moment that Peter Parker goes through to learn what it means to be a hero. That's, you know, that's, uh, it's there. It works on paper, but it doesn't really work when you add in all when you add in the the um, elements of storytelling, like it just doesn't truly work. It's there, but I mean, it's just like, come on, guys, you can do better than that. Um, typically, it's with the, typically it's with the death of his uncle, but uh, this time it's it's you know like it's different. So that you know like they want to be different and you know say something different and be different because this is a new new chapter like a new different spidey so they had to in, they had to incorporate that um differently this time and it just didn't work and the whole kitty aspect of tom holland really overselling this i'm a kid in high school fact just didn't help to drive that point home of how peter parker learns to be a hero you know like what um learns learns what it means iron man his mentor helps him out and it, you know like it kind of works like it didn't suck it didn't like it wasn't a complete failure but it didn't knock it out of the ballpark either and that's what i'm hoping for spider-man is arguably the greatest superhero ever i said arguably okay in my book batman and superman take the cake hands down hands down but Spider-Man comes immediately after that. He's definitely within the top three. So my point is, you've got this really important, huge character, and you're just kind of, it, it, it's, it's kitty. You're, it's like kid gloves. And if that's the route you're gonna go, then you gotta make that clear. But instead, I'm being let down because I'm thinking I got one film, but I got another one. I mean, that's, that, that's, that was my whole beef with it. And the whole, um, the whole kitty aspect, Tom Holland really, you know, honing in on it, on that aspect, that just didn't help. It just kind of made me, just that that all contributed to that. This is this doesn't live up to its potential aspect. And then on top of that, if you want to, you know, and then on top of that. Uh, you throw in this the the whole PC culture, you know we got to make sure that that we update it for for today because it's 2017. That that didn't help either. So that didn't help at all. So there was like a good handful of stuff that just kind of makes you cringe just a little bit because they want to make sure you know like um, everyone behind this film wants to make sure that you know hey it's 2017 so we got to be sure that you know like things are are diverse and politically correct and you know everybody's talking the way that they should and we got to make sure that we change this aspect of it because you know otherwise we may look racist we got to you know flip this part over here because you know otherwise that'll just be mean and hateful and we don't want to be like that so there was there was like a good handful of that to just make you cringe and and just say like this is exactly why we go to the movies to get away from stuff like this to not be reminded of stuff like this but you know like it it, it sparks a whole political debate a debate that i've had more than i more than i would have liked but you know i'll say that for another time <laughs> yeah it's it, yeah it can get frustrating but it was frustrating to to like you know be reminded of that while going to go and relive my childhood and it, i don't know it, like it just added more to the you know this had a lot of potential but it didn't really live up to it so on that aspect it could have been much 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 better 
but you know, like it failed to deliver. So nice try guys. I will hopefully look look out for the next one with, you know, with uh with an eagerness to it. So hopefully then you guys will get this one right and um and it'll be much better then. <laughs> yeah, because I was looking forward to this. But um yeah. On the next one. So on the next one and until then. See ya.